are, but all around her are symbols, friezes, sculptures, etc., meant to evoke a past that has nothing to do with Christianity. A bit later, he paints Teamana in a very different guise in Manitou Papau, or The Spirit of the Dead, watches this picture where he tells us he sort of comes upon her in the night, lying naked on a bed, terrified by the spirits. I think he realizes, having uh, come upon this scene, that there are whole levels of her experience that he can't possibly uh, truly understand, so he turns it into a kind of myth. He continued painting, but at the same time he was becoming much more aware of the difficult lives of the local people and how the French were just working so hard to destroy their culture. Gurgen had a tremendous capacity for stirring up trouble. He quarreled with everybody in Tahiti and made himself very unpopular. So he felt he needed uh, something fresh, something different. He felt Tahiti had become over-civilized. So he wanted to go somewhere wilder. And so he, he sailed to the Marquesas. Atuona, where he landed, was basically little more than a, a ramshackle settlement around the missions there. Gauguin designed and had built his own house and he carved five panels around the doors and decided to name the house the Maison de Jouir, the house of pleasure, the house of prostitution. He was completely anti-colonial. He was against the uh, colonial administration. He, uh, even even if he was in a bad condition, sometimes he, he was sick, he was sick. <coughs> but he defended the Marquesian people and also against the religion. He was uh, fighting uh, with the bishop here at the time, making fun of his uh, adventure because the bishop had an adventure with two women at the time, and he made even a statue to make fun of the bishop. He realized the end was coming, and so he thought, well, I'm going to paint my testament. This beautiful painting called Comte Bavar. On the left, you see Mayor de Han, a devil priest wearing a missionary dress, a woman posing in a Buddhist position. And then to the right, here is this beautiful red-haired Marquesan woman. To him, he found paradise. I think it is the birth of one kind of modern artist, the outsider, the character who, who doesn't compromise in that final portrait. Your confronted with the man himself. He's sick, he's getting old, the dreams haven't worked out, he's alone. It is a tragic image at the end. In 1903, Gauguin died. The grave is situated on a hill overlooking Atuona Bay, and it's shaded by a frangipani tree. To me, Gauguin's portraits are some of the most interesting things that he did. He loved people and he loved faces and I think he was very good at capturing um, people thinking and interior life. You can see them living. I think of Gauguin as a very great artist for his formal inventiveness, for the richness of content in his art which we have not yet plumbed, which we probably never will. It means that he's still very much alive for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.